A season of divine fitting. A season of divine fitting. Many of you know about a month ago I transitioned out of my role here as an elder, no longer pastoring people, counseling, meeting with them. I have shifted into primarily overseeing Maranatha, the school of ministry, and running with the vision of Jeremiah Johnson Ministries around the nation and around the world. And I'm continuing to meet with our elder teams at each of our campuses, helping to uh, counsel, uh, dive into issues, pray together, and also preaching uh, once a month at the campuses. But this month, you get me twice, so I will be preaching today and next Sunday. Going to be diving into a, a two-part uh, series here. Uh, but I released a prophetic word at one of our services on a Wednesday night. Um, it was September 25th. And whereas my role in the past has been very much um, helping to shepherd and be immersed in the people, uh, part of the role and the shift that I believe God has now called me to play here is to help apostolically make sure that we are sticking to the blueprint of the Word of God and that we are stewarding what God is saying to our body. There were seven different letters that John wrote, Jesus the author wrote to seven different churches in the book of Revelation. In other words, God is not saying the same thing to every church. You'll learn this when you travel on the road, if that's what God calls you to do. You don't want to get into regurgitating the same message over and over and over again because the Lord could be saying something fresh, something prophetic, something for the now. And I happen to believe in my spirit that God is saying something to this body right now, and I want to make sure you at least heard it. The obedience part is up to you. In fact, I don't need to guilt trip you, manipulate you. I have no intention of doing that. I'm going to play on the recording now the word that came forth September 25th for this body. I'm going to play it right now. and I'm actually going to play it again at the end of the message. And then we're going to have an altar call. Now, as a body of believers that's here... I have often said God does not speak because he likes to hear the sound of his voice. God speaks because he wants to be obeyed. The New Testament, though, says that we are to judge prophecy. So I want to make sure that I'm not coming off in a type of authoritarian. I'm about to play a prophetic word, and if you don't listen to it, you're not, you're not right with God, and you missed out. Not what I'm saying. What I'm simply saying is I'm going to play a prophetic word that came forth. I want you to judge it. I want you to test it. And I want you to see if what the Spirit of God is saying, how it might apply to your life. How many of you are not members of Heart of the Father ministry in your visit? Praise God. Guess what? You're here for a reason. You just didn't pick a service and come to it. I believe that God sent you here today because he has something to speak to your heart as well. Amen? Let me pray and then we'll play the word and uh, we'll dive into God's word. Father, thank you for this morning. Lord, we open up your word with expectation. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you wrote the word of God and you're still speaking today. I thank you that it's alive, it's active, it's sharper than two, any two double-edged sword. And God, I just pray for an awakening, and I do pray for a divine fitting. God, we're asking that you would release a divine fitting in this house, and even in our visitors, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's play that prophecy. This is what I hear the Lord saying to some of us tonight. This is a season of divine fitting. Like a puzzle that's missing a piece. 
some of my people feel like that puzzle piece where they don't know where they fit. This is a season of divine fitting where I am releasing an alignment. I am releasing divine friendship. I am releasing divine employment. I am releasing divine opportunity. I'm going to pause because I'm going to repeat the word of the Lord. But I want us tonight hear what God is saying to you and let each man judge what is the Lord saying. This is a season of divine fitting, says the Lord. Like a puzzle missing a puzzle piece. Many of my people feel like that puzzle piece saying, where do I fit? But the Lord would say to us tonight, this is a season of divine fitting, divine friendship, divine connection, divine employment, divine opportunity. Do not look for me in ways that you've looked for me in previous seasons. For I shall manifest in the coming days in a new way. For a new way will pave the way for new thinking. You cannot think in this season like you thought in last season. Do not get caught expecting me to move like I did last year. Do not despair. Do not grow discouraged as you have felt uncomfortable. You have felt tension. Some of you have felt like quitting and giving up. But the Lord says, I am the captain of the heaven's armies. I am the Lord your God and I will uphold you. I will lift up your hands. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine, says the Lord. Okay, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12. Brother, brother, I can't hear God. Well, you just did. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now we're going to let God speak to us in His Word. A season of divine fitting is upon us at part of the Father ministry, and also for our visitors today. Let's look at the Word of God. I believe that Paul, as a wise master builder, as an apostle in the New Testament, he was given a specific blueprint from the Lord Jesus Christ that allowed him to establish proper order and function in the body of Christ. I want to say that one more time. Paul was a wise master builder. As an apostle in the New Testament, he operated based off of a blueprint that the Lord Jesus Christ had given him for his body. And we are going to look at apostolic blueprints of the New Testament church and my prayer is that you and I would find ourselves in the middle of that blueprint. My prayer and my desire is that you and I, as members of the body of Christ, might find ourselves in the middle of the blueprint and ask, how can I participate? 1 Corinthians 12, 18. But I have decided where I want to go to church because I like the worship. They have the best kids' church 
and all of Lakeland, so I'm going there. This is going to be awkward. There is an apostolic blueprint of the New Testament church that Paul clearly established. And the problem is most of us are not operating off of the blueprint clearly revealed in Scripture. Nothing to do with a prophetic word or an experience. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, talking to them about being members of a body, being connected together. And he says, now God, can you say God? God. Now God has placed each member of the body, each one of them, just as he desired. There's this movement that I've talked about over the years here called church shopping. Or we plan a church and we're going to have interest meetings. In other words, we're going to try to put our feelers out there, whether people like what we're doing or not, and then we'll determine whether we're going to obey God. We're just going to visit a bunch of churches and try out the worship and try out the preaching and see how good the kids' church is. And then after surveying the land, which usually takes way longer... Oh, we'll just take a few weeks and then a few weeks turns into a few months and a few years. Now God has placed each member. In other words, the number one requirement before joining a body of believers is asking this question. Did God call you? But because if God called you and he placed you in that body, it doesn't matter if the worship stinks. It doesn't matter if you don't like the preaching. It doesn't matter if it's not spirit-filled enough for you. If the youth group stinks, did God call you there? Has God called you here? Oh, brother, I'm just not getting fed here. I, I don't see that in the apostolic blueprints of the New Testament church. I see people connecting for what they can pour out, not people connecting for what they can receive. I see God placing members in a body so that those members can function and be a blessing to the body rather than the number one goal is to be entertained. Well, let's look over at verse 11. For now God has placed the members in each one of them in the body just as he desired. Verse 11, same chapter, but one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. So the tension in the room is we are literally destroying our humanistic man-made theology concerning church. God has placed each member in a body just as He desired. You're not allowed to leave unless He tells you to leave. If God calls you, I'm not here because I like this and that. I'm here because God sent me. 
which makes you unoffendable, by the way. Because you're not there for them, you're there for God. Oh man, we could, we could get dangerous. <laughs> I truly believe some of the most offended people in the church are those who aren't even sure if they're called there. Because once you're called there, it answers a hundred different questions. It changes your filter, your perception. It's no longer, well, I'm going to kind of take a check. I like this and I don't like that. No, you, you put all of that to aside and say, Lord, you have placed me in this body. And clearly, if he places you in the body, he does it because they need what you have. I wish we could get that revelation sometimes. Well, I went to this church, and they're not this, and they're not that. Correct. That's why you're there. If they had it all together, he would have never sent you there. All right, it's quiet in here. All right? So we're confronted with just as he desired... And then we're confronted in verse 11 with, just as he wills. So I would encourage you, whether you're a member here, you're a member somewhere else, or you're just kind of floating around in our charismatic Pentecostal vacuums that we've created over the last 50 years, I just want to encourage you to pray a biblical way. To seek the Lord out of Lord, where do you want to place me? Not so that I can make it about me. Lord, where do you want to place me so that I could function and I could contribute and I could help build up the body in a way that blesses your heart, Lord? Who knows Rick Renner? Come on. He is a scholar of scholars, one of my favorites. He has devotionals over in Russia. I want to read you some of his comments on what we just read. I think that it could be a blessing to you. He says, as believers, we must say goodbye. Can you look to your neighbor and say goodbye? Goodbye. All right, now, if we're going to be fitted... If we're going to be fitted this morning in this next season, we're going to have to say goodbye to some of our thoughts, some of our perceptions, some of our ideologies. You can't want new and think old. We must say goodbye to our old, independent way of thinking and learn how to be integrated into a greater whole. We need each other. For without each other's input and gifts, we are incomplete. When God's people come together as a team to achieve a common goal, their unified effort brings divine power and world-transforming moves of God to the earth. Unity is a powerful force, but for some, unity is a vague, dreamlike wish for a day when Christians sweetly smile at each other, sing in harmony, disagreements are resolved and eliminated, and we all say and think and do the identical things. But the Bible never promises that day will come when we all agree about everything. This is a false concept of unity. It's a fantasy that will never be achieved on earth. When you are a part of a movement that talks like, acts like, dresses like, it might be a cult. So what is unity? Unity occurs when people are united in action and in passion 
for a common cause. Their shared goal, I want you to hear them, by the Spirit of the Lord, their shared goal is so strong that it removes hostilities, puts away disagreements, and gives previously divided people a reason to take their place alongside of one another. Their shared goal is so strong that it removes hostilities, puts away disagreements, and gives previously divided people a reason to take their place alongside of one another. When this occurs, gifts, talents, anointings become connected together, and the result is an amazing river of divine power that achieves the supernatural and accomplishes the impossible. I get that things are going to be a lot different around here because I've shifted. Can we just go there this morning? Jeremiah Johnson is no longer helping to oversee and give my input into every direction and every move of this church. The Lord has even shifted me into a new place. And the Lord has anointed an elder team in this place who, by the way, cares for you more than you know. We have an incredible deacon team. I don't know if you came on Wednesday night. We even have some diamonds that are hiding in here. Randy Horton. I don't know if you heard Enrico Link preach the other Sunday, but if you weren't saved, you might have gotten saved. Listen, take it from the guy who has literally traveled all over the world in the United States the last 10 years. There are more quality people in this one body of believers than I've ever went in over 400 churches. You might think, oh, brother, he's just sliding because he planted the church. No, I'm serious. There are quality, gifted, talented people in this church is never going to get to its destiny until you settle in your heart, did God call you here? Regardless of who's leading, regardless of who's the founder, just because someone else shifts doesn't mean you're called to shift. Just because God is saying go to someone else might mean he's saying you're going to sit your butt right there in this chair for the next four years and I'm going to teach you how to serve another man's vision until you get your own. Meanwhile, the next guy just got launched into, but there's a divine season of fitting that I believe is manifesting in this congregation. And I believe because it was the Lord himself who gave me the vision for what this has become, he brought elders, he brought quality people. If God birthed it, he will maintain it. If God place crumble. You don't know what kind of prayers I've been praying over there now? Is this different? I pray more different prayers now for this place than I ever have before because my roles change. I say, Lord, what your spirit has birthed, let it come alive. And what is that of the flesh? Let it be exposed and torn down. Yeah. How we doing? All right, let's keep letting the word talk to us. Flip to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Again, we're going to keep looking at a blueprint. 
I promise you, Paul had a spirit of wisdom and revelation out of an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ as a wise master builder in so many of the letters, he's teaching them a pattern, a blueprint, how to build up the body according to the desires of the Lord. So let's pick up in Ephesus here, chapter 2, verse 19. He says to them, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. The Greek is just simply going to say you're children of God. You're part of a family. So he's telling them, hey, listen. When you were born into the kingdom of God, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, it was more than just saying yes and then wandering around disconnected from people. You have been welcomed into the household of God. Verse 20, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, these kinds of things, this is what starts scaring people. Because it doesn't say built on the foundation of pastors. It doesn't say built on the foundation of teachers. And it doesn't say built on the foundation of evangelists. Those are the three most ministries, however, that we're comfortable with. Pastor, teacher, evangelist, everyone's fine. You say apostle or prophet, pe people flip their lid. How many of you have found that to be true? If you again compare it to the New Testament, the two most ministries that are mentioned the most are apostles and prophets. The word pastor is only mentioned one time. So it's interesting, again, when you compare blueprints of the New Testament church versus how we've built right now in much of America, there's sort of a tension that comes in. Now let me just give you a conservative view and then I'll give you kind of my take. So the foundation of the apostles and prophets, what it's going to say right here is this. Christ Jesus has become our cornerstone. The apostles, the 12, who walked with the Lord, we obviously know Judas betrayed Jesus, Matthias came in, that kind of thing. But these men, these original 12, they walked with, they talked with. It was out of a revelation of Jesus Christ that they laid the foundation of the New Testament church. So when it says built on the foundation of apostles, it's saying those original 12 unveiled and uncovered the Lord Jesus Christ to all those they came in contact with, and it was upon that foundation that they built. Now the prophets come in, I believe conservatively, he's mentioning Old Testament prophets, messianic prophecy who foretold of the coming of Messiah. So apostles, are you tracking with me? Apostles who walk with him, they laid the foundation. The prophets prophesied from long ago, foretelling the coming of Christ. So he laid it upon the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. Turn to your neighbor and say cornerstone. Okay, so if something is New Testament, it has to be built on what? It's okay, you can shout it. Okay, so if we're going to go after apostolic blueprints of the New Testament church, there's only one foundation, there's only one cornerstone. Apostles and prophets carry a spirit of revelation. Now I'm shifting into now. I believe God has specifically graced apostles and prophets with a revelation of Jesus Christ. Because you can ask the question, where in the New Testament 
does a pastor plant a church? Oh, only apostles do. Apostles are called to plant churches because they carry a revelation. They have the right blueprints. They are able to set the right trajectory for the people. So if we go down this route, we are no longer building churches off of charisma. We're not building churches off of personalities. And again, it's challenging. Why are you here? I don't join a movement or join a church to worship the man or woman of God. I join a church because God called me and I'm willing to participate and be a member and function just as he wills. <laughs> How we doing? So has anybody witnessed any leaders in the body of Christ? Fall the last 50 years? Sexual immorality and mundering money laundering. And so, boom, they flop over and everyone leaves. They flop over and what happened? We built churches and movements based on the charisma and personalities of men and not apostolic blueprints, which is Christ in Christ alone. I just wish out of the gate, church leadership would just confess before, I'm going to fail you, I'm going to disappoint you, I'm going to wound you, I'm going to hurt you, I appreciate you want relationship with me, but again and again and again, I'm just going to let you down. Open the heart of the Father. <laughs> Because again, what you're setting them up for is a relationship, a passionate pursuit, a lifelong dream like David. I have set the Lord before me, therefore I cannot be shaken. When you're, you're a part of an apostolic house, when you begin to follow apostolic men and women, they begin to build off of blueprints that are not American. They begin to tear down the idolatry that's in the church. And they prophetically, is anybody awake? They begin to prophetically declare, let my people go. That we would all know the Lord for ourselves. That we would take the feeding tube out of the pulpit and learn how to feed on God for ourselves. So when the apostles and the prophets arise, they're after maturity, not infancy. They're not going to babysit you. They're not going to coddle you. You cannot be around them and not feel the tension of, we're going somewhere. How we do? Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. I just want to bless you. I know I'm going to transition, but if you don't remember anything this cuckoo guy said today, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He calls you. He places you. He empowers you to function, and when people don't like you and you feel like you don't fit in, you're not there for them anyways. Go throw the pity party and the mad attitude. Go do it at your house and in the closet. And when you show up to the assembly, be ready to encourage and exhort. And when you see a need, fill the need. Oh, brother, I don't like the nursery carpet. Great, get your checkbook out. It's time to pay for it. I don't like this and I don't like that. That's why you're there. Just some things I got.
place now. So. <laughs> Okay, so cornerstone. Again, Paul as an apostle in the New Testament, he is operating prophetically under spirit of revelation, and he is using even the prophecy of Isaiah to drop this to us today. So let's look at, well, I'll just turn it real quick, Isaiah 28. Listen, listen how amazing this is. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a precious stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation to be firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed, and I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the level. Paul is just not pulling this stuff out of his rear at Ephesus. And all these people claiming to be apostles and prophets, I'm like, brother, read your Bible. You're talking about angels and revelations and whatever. You don't even know the word of God. Paul is saying he's carrying a revelation. Jesus is the cornerstone. Where did he get that? Isaiah 28. Behold, I lay a stone in Zion, a precious, costly stone. He who puts his trust in him will not be disturbed. Hallelujah. Have you put your trust in that stone? Are you building your house upon that stone? Are you trusting in that stone? If you're disappointed, if you feel unfitted, if you're lost, if you're wandering, whatever that you might feel this morning, I want to encourage you, lay all the bitterness, all the unforgiveness, all the rejection, all the excuses, lay it all down at the foot of the cross today, and let's start building His way. Verse 21, in whom the whole building, can you say whole? So the whole building, who does that involve? Every single person in this room. Okay. Because I know that preachers have this special access to God, right? Unless you give the prophet $7.77, you can't tap into the angelic realm. The whole building is being fitted together. It's growing into a holy temple in the Lord. Why don't you just grab hands with your neighbor real quick? If you're sick, don't touch them. <laughs> Give him up. Okay. Just want to make sure that we're building right, okay? Before the fitting, we have to make sure that we're building on the right foundation. Who is the cornerstone of the church? Jesus. Apostles and prophets, they build according to the pattern, and who do they reveal to the body? Jesus. I didn't hear you. Jesus. So it's not about promoting my ministry and what I want to do and my good ideas. My number one role in calling is to reveal the Christ. Yes? yes? So Jesus Christ is the cornerstone of the church, and we are being fitted together the entire body. So it's more than going to Hot FM 101 and 102 and taking new member classes at different churches. It's literally saying like a puzzle piece was the word of the Lord. How do I fit? Because some of us are more jagged than others. It's a joke. I mean, not all the indentions and the pieces. I mean, some of us were like, woo, and we're going to have to find our group in the church that we can fit into. Now, the good news is there's room for everyone at the table. 
2014, I made one of the biggest mistakes I made at the church. I started calling us a prophetic church. I don't want you to miss this. 2014, I made one of the greatest mistakes I have made. I started calling this church a prophetic church. Well, what's wrong with that? What that tells people is if you're not prophetic, you're not welcome here. And dear God, if you know prophetic people, we do not need all prophetic people. <laughs> Nothing would ever get done. We would prophesy and tell you of the dreams and the visions and the future, but when it actually comes to laboring and walking with people through the prophetic word that you just gave them that is going to mess up their life, the Lord says you're going to move. Did you really, like, consider the implications of the word you just gave on? I'm moving. <laughs> Are you still holding their hand or it got weird? <laughs>
Just because the Holy Spirit dwells in the lives of all believers doesn't mean we don't need to receive from the grace that God has given these five ministries. And at the same turn, just because someone might be called as an apostle, prophet, teacher, pastor, and evangelist doesn't mean we're better than, we're elite, we should look down on people. It's the same Holy Spirit. The way that I teach it is grace determines function. According to the grace that God has given you, that's how you're called to function in the body of Christ. But it's real interesting here. Look at verse 12. Because again, it's going to cause tension in the room. He gave these ministries, why? For the equipping of the saints, so they could just hang out and say great message and go home and watch NFL. Oh. Look at the screen. So we attend, we come, we listen. Some of us are on our 10,078th sermon. We are trained, we are equipped for what? I know it's a cuss word today. Work. Service. Well, there's nothing going on at this church. Why are you looking at the leadership? Come on. No, this is, we got to go here. Who does the work in the body of believers? The saints. Who does the equipping, the leadership? So if this body is not functioning according to how God designed it, it could be an equipping issue. I'm just going to tell you here, not. Go ahead and kick that part out. Because I can just tell you again, if you've been coming here any amount of time in this church, you have received more rich, more thorough, more revelatory teaching and preaching, including conferences, than churches all over America could ever dream of. I just think some of you don't realize you've got the goods. All right, look at your neighbor and say you got the goods. <laughs> but there's a need. I just watched the TV, Pastor. And there's kitty cats down in North Lakeland that are that are getting run over by cars. <laughs> we need to get involved in the animal shelters and we need to. Well, why are you going to them? I mean, honestly, I mean, can, we'll, we'll just list 50 billion needs right now. And while we're mad at the church leaders that they're not doing anything. So I see a lot of it is set, set the people free. Okay, yes, there's controlling leaders out there. But a lot of you have a ball and chain attached to your ankle right now. And it's hooked to the church chair. Yeah. The, the church, the leader, the vision, the... I mean, I don't even mean to preach on this, but I, I've been just loving to interview all these folks who have been hurt by the church these days. And I get I, I know there's some legit stuff out there. The majority of people that I'm meeting that were, quote, hurt by the church, they were ever, a lot of them 
were finally, after years and years, told to get off the bench and get in the game. Their preaching's too hard. They're just, they're after us. The gospel is after you. I am again in the pains of childbirth. Oh! To see Christ formed in you. How we do it? Let's raise your hand, Mr. Everybody. We got hundreds, thousands of giftings and callings and anointings and talents and giftings, and I wonder how many of them are being used. People are like, "Get <laughs> saints, I, I'm not." I'm not here to guilt you or shame you. I'm, I'm just saying this is what Jesus died for. He gave them all the revelation. Jesus as the head, the cornerstone. We are his body. The body doesn't function without the members. If as long as you're not functioning, there's always going to be a lack in the church. And as we're on this transition and this journey, and the Lord's going to have His way at part of the Father. Some of you that have been sitting there for years, you've got to get involved. Some of you that have been serving for years, maybe it's time for a shift. I don't know what the Lord is saying. Maybe you're here today visiting and you're like, wow, this is amazing. I feel this way. I'm praying. I'm searching. I'm believing for where do I fit? Peter, another apostle, walked with Christ. He has this revelation. This is his language. Four more minutes. First Peter 2 5, if you're taking notes. You also, as living stones, so Paul has the revelation of members. Peter has a revelation of you and I being living stones. Is your neighbor awake? Living stones full of the breath, the ruach of God are being built up as a spiritual house. For a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Living stones being fitted and built together to be a spiritual household for the glory of the Lord to be revealed. Lord, we want the glory. We want revival. We want it's not going to come when there's still strife and jealousy and insecurity and laziness and backbiting and gossip. I'm all for the glory and the revival to be revealed, but why would he pour wine into a wineskin that's at war with itself? I hope there's not a war in this house. I hope we're taking the road of humility and servanthood and seeking and asking the Spirit of God, God, I know you called me here. I'm not going anywhere. How can I fit? How can I be a living stone? And all these words are built up. Anyone can kick down a barn. Takes a wise master builder to build one, though. All right, we'll finish in Ephesians 4.15. Look at your neighbor and say, get to work. Good thing we're not taking up the offering next. <laughs> but speaking the truth. 
truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head of the church. So Paul is just moving and moving. He's laying a revelation out of the body, the cornerstone, and then he's about to hit us with, he's not only the cornerstone, he's the head of the church. She just did his picture up there. She just stopped trying to entertain people in worship. What was Justin doing this morning? I mean, where where are the words on the song, the, the, the screens? They're written on his heart. <coughs> From whom the whole body, being fitted and held together, there it is, by that which every joint supplies. I wish you didn't say that. Because oh. now you and I have to repent. Who holds and fits the body together? Gotcha. Gotcha. Look at it again. He's the head. He's the cornerstone. But who holds and fits the body together? Ready? Every joint that supplies. <coughs> Wait a minute. God, just do it. Always oh, said it's a dangerous thing waiting for God to do something when he's waiting for you to do something. This is a revelation. Yes, he's the head. Yes, he's the cornerstone. But you know who's going to hold this church together? Not leaders. Not crying out to God. It's every joint, every vessel, everyone contributing. They had no needs among them. Not because manna fell down out of the sky, but because you and I coughed up our money. Thank you, sir. According to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. I just feel in my heart as I prepare the, the call to repentance this morning, and it's a tough one. It's called idolatry. Now some of us just came by it by way of the environment we grew up in. So man-centered. So preacher-oriented. I have to find, I have to get connected in a podcast, YouTube-dominated. i got to plug into someone else's sound. Yeah, but have you heard the sound of heaven yet? Have you discovered the divine design of the Spirit of God for your own life? There's room at the Father's table for everyone. And His desire is for all things to be built up and fitted together, not by His magic wand, but by you and I working together, building relationship, learning what it means to be a family. I had a dream several months ago, and I've shared this before, maybe you've heard it. I had a dream where there was a long line going into heaven. Everyone had a bucket. Some of the buckets were full, some of the buckets were not full at all. To my surprise, the people who brought full buckets of water with them into heaven, God was greatly displeased. I woke up from the dream and I said, Lord, what do the buckets represent? What is up with the water? He said, Jeremiah, like a vessel, like a bucket, 
I have created humanity, and I have put myself in them. There are deposits out of the richness of Christ Jesus that I have put in their vessel. And when they get to heaven, when they enter into their reward, I don't want anything brought back up here. Maybe this is why Paul, at the end of his life, is praying to be wrung out. <clears throat> Sports analogy, leave it all on the field. So whether you're a teenager or you're an older man or woman, how much of God in you have you wrung out? I'm not just saying, God, do it. Give him something to work with. God, we just pray for the salvation of Lakeland. Get on the streets. Well, we want prayer. Go to the prayer meeting. No one's there. Good, that's why you're there. Pray until more people get there. Why don't you just close your eyes for a minute? God, I want to thank you for the giftings, the callings, the grace, the anointing. Lord, we give you praise. The awe and wonder of salvation, being born again, being filled with a new nature, being granted the precious person of the Holy Spirit. I hear the Spirit of God saying, some of you, you need the baptism. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that even the gifts and the calling of God in your life might become manifest. Mm. God, what I want to ask, where have you placed us? Mm. Lord, where do you want us in this season? God, I pray where there's disagreements among spouses. Holy Spirit, we're asking, would you bring agreement? Mm. I felt that in the room all morning. God, where there is disagreement, bring agreement.
I just I feel it, a spirit of distraction is, is, is at work in some of our lives, trying to detour us, trying to get us on what he's saying to someone else. God, I just pray for grace to focus on what you are saying. Let each man, let, let each woman, let each marriage and, and family hear from you in this season. Justin Rizzo, I just, I felt the Spirit of God saying to me as, as you were leading worship this morning that there's a season of great preparation that is a, upon you. He is uh, preparing you for unforeseen places and an unforeseen people. I saw the Lord coming and bringing you the tent peg of Jabez. And the Lord says that you will not just be one man that will pitch a tent, a tabernacle of David, and sing songs to your God. But I saw a field covered with other young men and women who you taught to pitch their own tent. There will be a multiplication. There will be a variety. There will be a diversity that will mark your calling. Even as things have been shaken around you, there's been a jockeying, there's been a shifting, an unearthing. The Lord says that I invite you in this season to begin to seek me about unforeseen places, preparing you for an unforeseen peace. I want to ask you this morning if you know this word was for you. If the Spirit of God is speaking to you, He's confirming it, I want you to stand. And again, it's nothing to do with me. We're just posturing our hearts before the Lord. As I said, I know it could be redundant. I want to play this word one more time and we're going to pray Go ahead, one more time. This is what I hear the Lord saying to some of us tonight. This is a season of divine fitting. Like a puzzle that's missing a piece. Some of my people feel like that puzzle piece where they don't know where they fit. This is a season of divine fitting where I am releasing an alignment. I am releasing divine friendship. I am releasing divine employment. I am releasing divine opportunity. I'm going to pause because I'm going to repeat the word of the Lord. But I want us tonight hear what God is saying to you and let each man judge what is the Lord saying. This is a season of divine fitting, says the Lord. Like a puzzle missing a puzzle piece, many of my people feel like that puzzle piece saying, where do I fit? But the Lord would say to us tonight, this is a season of divine fitting, divine friendship, divine connection, divine employment, divine opportunity. Do not look for me in ways that you've looked for me in previous seasons. For I shall manifest in the coming days in a new way. For a new way will pave the way for new thinking. You cannot think in this season like you thought in last season. Do not get caught expecting me to move like I did last year. Shh. 
Do not despair. Do not grow discouraged as you have felt uncomfortable. You have felt tension. Some of you have felt like quitting and giving up. But the Lord says, I am the captain of the heaven's armies. I am the Lord your God and I will uphold you. I will lift up your hands. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine, says the Lord. Isn't that great? Everybody got a prophecy today. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this morning. Holy Spirit, everything that you've said, everything, Lord, I just pray. Lord, even for grace to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Mm. Lord, there be no confusion. That there would only be a settling and a further firming up of what you have spoken. God, I pray now for grace to act, grace to shift, grace for forgiveness. I hear the Spirit of God saying right now, there are some perceptions that you've had of other people that are simply inaccurate. God, I'm asking right now that if we have perceptions or thoughts about other people that are inaccurate, give us grace to renounce, to repent if needed. God, come and cleanse and purify our hearts. Lord, bind us together in love in this place. Lord, let the bonds of peace, Lord, let not your work be thwarted in this house. There's a Nehemiah anointing that's here. Jesus, we love you. Everybody said, Amen. 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 We want to bless you. We want to